because John's got a GoPro now, so I don't have oh. to. But I'm obviously it's like you know massively self-involved in the next yeah, person, so say, yeah. I can do it myself. So. Guitar. No guitar things will be happening this evening. Now, you may or may not know, I'm doing the Bowie Tribute Night next Saturday at the gorgeous Oval Tavern. Oh, just lovely. Now, I'm the kind of person who really pays attention to stuff. So when I was doing Bowie songs, I'm really shit at learning other people's lyrics. Because my lyrics are known really intimately, but other people's lyrics, it's just like they just kind of bounce off me. I'm like Teflon for other people's lyrics. So I thought, okay, you've got to really sit in front of this bowie stuff, open like a sponge, and let the bowiness soak in. So I did that, and I tried, well, you can imagine that was like I'm taking some kind of mad drug. Uh, so I did it with Life on Mars. And I started to soak in, and I was like, oh, these lyrics, these lyrics are so close to being about my life, but they're not. It was like an itchy jumper. I've just got to whip that jumper off and see what tangy lyrics I can find underneath. I'm not going to sing this, but I think most of you know how Life on Mars goes. I'm going to speak it, and you can imagine the tune. So, to give you a bit of background here, Bowie wrote Life on Mars at the start of the 70s. At that point in time, if you look at the voting history that we've had since 1945, it was pretty much even with Labour and Conservative. So this is a bit like having your left brain and your right brain pretty much sharing the show. From the 70s, it just went... <sighs> Liberal rose, Labour sunk, Conservative went, ah, ha, ha, bye, latest losers. So... When Barry wrote his version of Life on Mars at the start of the 70s, he was writing about this girl, pissed off with her life, her parents not paying attention to her or even their own lives. So what does she do? She goes to the movies because her friend's not, not around for her to go out with. By the time I come along, I was born in 1977, by the time I come along in the 80s, that's a dream. Going out to the cinema with your friends. Now I'm sitting indoors, scared to go outside, watching a fucking telly. <laughs> so I think I've had to update Bowie for a child of the 80s. And this is what we get. It's called Life in Bars. And the reason it's called that, because uh, there's this lovely girl thinking, wow, this is fucking dull. I wonder if there's life on Mars. And I was thinking, wow, if I survived my childhood, I've heard places you can drink alcohol are good. <laughs> I wonder if there's life in bars. <laughs> so here we go. It's a god awful sad affair for the girl with the dirty hair. But her mum is a bit of a junk, and her dad is a bad joke. She hasn't got friends or a scene. So she slumps in her little dream to the seat with the clearest view and she's hooked to the tiny screen. But the program is a saddening bore cause it's racing on Channel 4. She wanted to watch the cartoons but he's making her focus on horses racing on a Saturday. Oh man, look at those Gigi's go. Such a very dull show. Take a look at the lawman, beating up the wrong guy. Man, mum said she lost a baby, and dad was never the same again. It's America's promised dream, 
the Mickey Mouse Club for glamorous teens. Now the children have struck for fame, because Disney made it look great. See the toys that I can't afford in the Thornton Heath Tesco store. Raw Italia, sorry, what's that? Welcome to my camp. Now this program looks really good, but I'm cold and I'm starved for food. I'll watch whatever shit comes on to distract me from all of the crying and screaming from the boys' room. Oh man, this is my least favourite show. It makes the heartbreaking radio. Take a look at my father beating up his family. Uh, will the misery ever stop? Mum's at the charity shop. Is there life in bars? may have despairingly heard me talk about pixies. Pixies are real. And the pixies, the pixies of the subconscious, the unlimited pixies of space and time, gave me a, a note that says I'm allowed to laugh in people's faces. There's a good, there's a good reason for it. It's like the doctor saying, yeah, don't get that wet, yeah? Pixies know what they're doing. So I'm going to read this to you so you can understand why I'm allowed to laugh in people's faces and why you should not resist. So, this is a public service announcement from the interior. It's called, A Mirror is Coming, and her name is Tuti Gabora. And goes like this. Peekaboo, I see you. This is not a message for the young, the meek, or the small. This is a message for those who have grown fat on the suffering of others. Wankers! <laughs> we are from the planet Duplo, and we are here to destroy you. And we will do it by laughing in your faces. We are the winds of change, and we blow soft and warm on the cheeks of those who truly seek and can therefore wholeheartedly accept redemption for the sins they have committed against themselves. However, those who continue to take from our system whilst blaming others for the shortfall will feel us blow so hot that their skin will melt and their eyeballs will pop like boiling comets from their skulls. <laughs> We are but a mirror. If you fry, it will be from the ever-increasing heat of your own resisted shame. Do you understand? It's time for change. We mean you no harm. We consider you to be family, and we see and we love the whole of you. We are simply here to show you to yourselves, the whole of you. We promise that you will find in this mirror precisely the same mercy and understanding as you truly show to us. It's truly up to you, for we were created by your own hand, the one you've been hiding behind your back. Fingers crossed. And now we bring you fair warning. It is time to turn around and look at that hand. Do it now. The only way to continue to keep it hidden from yourself is to perish with it. And then, well, it's just simply bitter luck next life, yeah? So, to sum up, the pretense that your decisions are somebody else's sin will no longer be tolerated. We are but a mirror. But if, when you look in this mirror, there is a gaping hole where your heart should be, your brain will tell you that you are dead. And it will be right. You cannot resist this change, because deep down, you want it to. <laughs> the hidden part of you is clamouring to be seen. And you know what? That's our family too. Peekaboo! I see you!
So that was, that was all a little bit heavy, wasn't it? Now, luckily, I happen to be a shamanistic recorder player. So what I'm going to do now is close the room. So uh, you probably want to turn the sound off for this because uh, if nobody really wants to hear me play the recorder, let alone through speakers.